is the largest St. Patrick's Day parade anywhere in the world, with more marchers and more banners than you can count. And next year, there will be at least one more, from the first gay and lesbian group in the parade's history. This change of tone and expanded inclusiveness to the organizers is a gesture of goodwill to the LGBT community, all the while remaining loyal to church teachings and the principles that have guided the parade committee for so many decades. The St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York City, to many people, is more than just a collection of floats and bands. It has been celebrated there since 1762, the world's largest and oldest parade in the world celebrating the Irish faith. Until just a few days ago, openly gay groups were not allowed to march in the parade, a decision made by the parade organizers, a decision that involved the Catholic Church and put the faith back on a track of conflict with those who claim they are Catholics no matter what and deserve the same rights as everyone else. It's a pleasure to welcome back to Midpoint, President of the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights, Bill Donahue joins us from our studios in New York. Bill, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much, Ed. Bill, let's go ahead and look at a number of different things in this year. First of all, you recently told the Worldwide Catholic Network, and I'm going to quote, if it gets to the point where the Catholic element is completely diluted, then I will no longer march in the parade. What did you mean about the Catholic element? Well, some people think this is an Irish parade. It's not. It's an Irish Catholic parade. Now, I know that there are people here in New York City who have long lobbied. I don't mean gays necessarily. I'm talking about Irish activists who are not particularly Catholic friendly. I mean, you can be Irish, raised Catholic, and then become maybe not Catholic friendly, perhaps even anti-Catholic. There are these people, along with the gay groups, who are trying to change the makeup of the parade. The parade is about one thing, honoring St. Patrick. There are gay pride parades and every other kind of parade here in New York City, so we have lots of diversity. To the extent that they try to neuter the Catholic element, I will no longer uh, support the parade. Indeed, I will pull my own unit. Has it come to that at this point? No, and I hope it doesn't. When you talk about neuter the parade, what would happen? What would change that people would notice? Well, for one thing, you'd have more Irish groups and less Irish Catholic groups. I mean, for example, uh, the prime example being uh, the fact that the parade committee decided they're going to choose one gay group. It's neither Irish nor Catholic. It curiously happens to be a gay group of employees who work for NBC. NBC is the network which carries the parade and which makes hundreds of thousands from it. So are they simply then just throwing out a bone here, if you will, just to NBC to keep them happy? Well, I said that my support was conditioned on this continuing to honor St. Patrick and not to dilute it and turn it into a diversity free-for-all parade. And I wanted a rule change, a formal rule change, which would say that not only can gay Catholics march under their own banner, so can pro-life Catholics. People have to understand that I have two decades invested in this. For 20 years, I've been basically the unofficial spokesman in defense of the St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee in deciding not to have a gay group. I came to that conclusion because they don't have political agendas other than just simply they do have one sign, England out of Ireland, but you're not supposed to be representing your own particular political cause. That's why I've been able to say for years, yes, it's okay to deny gays their own unit because pro-life Catholics cannot march under their own banner as well. Gays and pro-life Catholics obviously march with me probably all these years in the Catholic League contingent. I didn't ask people about these kinds of questions. So here's my, my issue. If you're going to allow gay Catholics to march, you have to allow pro-life Catholics to march. I've seen no formal recognition of them, and if they forget about it, I'll remind them. Let me just point out again, I want to make sure that everybody understands here. The NBC Universal employees that will march, again, do you think this is just a bone being thrown to them simply because they are the network that makes money? Oh, I think so. One of the guys who happens to be on the parade committee is also the chief revenue officer for NBC. This is only too cute by half. All right. Now, Bill, you have made some comments recently which have gotten an awful lot of people angry, and I want to give you a chance here to talk about those. This was made on the Sirius XM program Progress, where it said certain conditions met you would be, quote, in favor of allowing any group to march as long as the attention is not on their cause. Now, you have said that. However, there is another quote here which got a lot of people angry. Here's the hitch, and please make sure, I want to make sure that I'm quoting you exactly here. 
Here's the hitch, mm -hmm. and this is in a story Donahue said about allowing gays to march. They do have dress requirements and other kinds of strictures. The question is, will the gays behave? Gays have been known to take their clothes off in the parade. They can't keep their pants on sometimes when they march in the gay pride parade. We've mentioned that to a couple of gay activists, and they are furious mm -hmm. at that because they see that as a real insult, and they see that as something that is not in line with what the Catholic Church is trying to do to bring everybody together. <laughs> Were those quotes accurate? Oh, they're not only accurate, I've got the proof. I hired a photographer. See, I got a nose for this, Ed. This is, not a, this is not an issue where somebody may be right and somebody's wrong. I'm right and they're wrong. Why? Because I have the pictures. I have pictures of men masturbating in the streets in New York in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral back in June of 1994 at the 25th anniversary celebration of Stonewall. I have pictures of men and women going naked in the streets, doing satanic dances with their middle fingers extended saying a certain word. Uh, as they went by St. Patrick's Cathedral in an illegal march. They were escorted by the police under the police commissioner, Bratton, who is also the same police commissioner we have in New York City today. And I sent those pictures all over New York to, to the media. I sent them to the people in the Giuliani administration. And I said, if, unless you want a real riot in the streets, you'd better do something you talk about disrespect. These animals went in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral naked and cursing in the most vile way against Catholicism. So, no, anybody wants to challenge me on this, the only, re the only regret is this. They won't be able to show it. Not on in Newsmax, not on CNN, not in the New York Times, CBS, ABC, Fox News Network. Nobody's going to pitch it up because, because it's all obscene. Oddly enough, now I'm going to tell you that I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a lot of people here because there certainly are those who would listen to what you said and they might say, well, wait a minute, Bill, hang on. You're talking about pictures from June 1994. That's a long time ago. Mores have changed right now. You're talking about an illegal march that took place. It would seem to many people here in the LGBT community, they would probably say to you, Things have changed. Things are different. We're not going to allow that to happen. This is simply just old dogma that walks in, and that's a fear that no longer is relevant. How would you answer that? Well, here's my answer to that. At 9 o'clock this morning, over in the New York Public Library, right down the block where I am in New York City, there was a press conference with uh, three groups led by Irish queers. One of the spokespersons there was Ann Northrup. Ann Northrup wants to march in the parade. Is she a throwback? You bet she is. She's one of the people who was the one of the founders and architects of the Nazi-like storming of St. Patrick's Cathedral during a mass when gays crashed in there and they, ch they changed themselves to the pews. They spit the Eucharist on the floor. That's a Nazi-like tactic. She wants, she's back. I thought she, the woman went away someplace, maybe went to Hawaii or someplace. She's back and she wants to march. So all these people say, I'm, dream, I'm dreaming up these things from the past. No, nope, this just happened today. But you think that she would still, people like this would still probably take what they did in the past and they might actually look to do it again here in the present just to make a point, a political I, I, point, I, as you believe. I wouldn't, tr I don't know if they would or not, but I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. And I'm simply saying this, when people say, well, at the St. Patrick's Day Parade, you have drunks. Yes, you have drunks. They happen to be spectators. They're not in the parade. When you see gays acting up, and by the way, they just had the Gay Pride Parade in June. I still don't think it's normal for men to walk around in their jock straps and, and, and having, uh, you know, uh, simulated sodomy on floats. But that's what still goes on. And these are not spectators. These are the participants. Where are the people condemning this kind of thing? I'm not saying most gays are like this. Obviously, most gays are good people just like most heterosexuals are. Unfortunately, there is a minority of activists who are stridently anti-Catholic, and I'm not going to be afraid to call attention to it, even though I know I'm the one who gets called the names, but I'm not going to be a coward. So about a minute left, then, how do we solve this then? How does the Catholic Church then come to grips with the LGBT community and those who say they want to be Catholics, they want to be good Catholics, they want to be part of what goes on at the St. Paddy's Day Parade? Where do we go next? Well, I think what you do is you scream. You make sure that the, that the gays who march are just like the straights who march. You try to, you have rules, you have strictures, you make sh certain that everyone's on pace on honor St. Patrick. I, I don't think they'll have any problem finding good gay people to march. The problem I have is that what I, I'm going to repeat it. It happened today. 
9 o'clock this morning. Irish Queers, the Lavender and Green contingent, the St. Pat's for All, and Northrop is there who helped uh, launch that Nazi-like invasion in 89. These are the people who say, if we don't get in, we're going to protest. Now, I would assume that the NBC gay contingent will be well-behaved. But uh, you see what they've done. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not Bill Donahue's parade. I'm just simply saying this. As long as you allow pro-life Catholics to march under their own banner, I'm good with it. I haven't seen that been made official. Bill Donahue of the Catholic League, always somebody who speaks his mind and puts it right out there for everybody to look at. Bill, thanks so much for being here. We'll talk again. Thank you, Ed. All right, later on this hour, it's only a phone to some, but a Wall Street earthquake to others. That's coming up right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.